Hello and welcome to the Prospect Blueprint. This webcast is for prospects, coaches, and those who support those prospects so they best understand what it takes to get from one level to another, what to embrace and what to avoid to get to whatever that level may be. I'm Kelly Kleinman and my battery mate as usual is Rick Dempsey, 24-year MLB vet and fan favorite with the Twins, Yankees, Brewers, the Cleveland Indians, Dodgers, and the Baltimore Orioles. Let's not forget 1983, he was the MVP of that World Series for the Baltimore Orioles. Hi, Rick. Hi, how are you? I'm looking forward to talking to this coach today. <laughs> He's closer to home for me back east than, than most of the other coaches are. So at least 100%. he has a, an idea of what's been going on in Baltimore for uh, quite a few years. Well, let's introduce our guest for the day, and he is Liam Bowen. He's the head coach out of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. He is the big dog of the UNBC Retrievers baseball program. They are a mid-major D1 playing out of the American East Conference. Uh, today, we're going to learn what kind of players he's looking for and what his insights are into the current insanity that is college sports recruiting baseball specific. He's up against some super stiff recruiting competition every year, but this one is different. We have the portal, great equalizer for some programs, but a risk as well for others. You may lose as much as you gain, but with college free agency now reality, you may get a second chance at a kid you tried to recruit. Coach Bowen, welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Liam, you know, one of the reasons why I'm not sitting right next to you helping you coach that ball club is because I, I don't know what I would do ab ab about recruiting players. It just seems like one of the toughest things, uh, maybe one of the toughest parts of your job as all well is getting players to come to your to your college, you know, and 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 play for you. But it's been how's your summer going so far recruiting players? Well, well, first off, Rick, you're welcome anytime if you want to come by <laughs> practice. We're, we we we'll, we'll, we'll certainly I take you anytime we can get that, you. Honestly, yeah, yeah. At, at UMBC, absolutely. Um, it's going well. It's going well. I think um, you know we're we're going into our fourth year with me as the head coach, and I was the recruiting coordinator uh, here for eight years before that. And luckily, we've gotten through a lot of the adjustments that we've had to make for the pandemic. And that obviously was sort of its its own beast. Um, I think over this time and just being able to I've been very fortunate to stay in one place and be able to really put down roots at our university. And um, I think you just get to find out, hey, well, what's going to work here for us? Because what works for us isn't necessarily the same thing that works for everybody else. So it's been a really good summer in that way where we've gotten to operate more normally. Uh, we got a really good coaching staff in place. The assistants work really hard at this every day. And I think we, we're starting to see the fruits of, you know, putting those yeah. things in place that we've, we've been eager to put in place this whole time. And it's, it's been an, a little slower going than we had hoped. But um, the, the, the local area, you know, the, the state of Maryland is doing a better and better job of turning out good players. We have more guys to pick from, I think, every year, which is really encouraging for a state school like us. And we're – very excited about what we've been able to do these past couple of classes. What events do you prioritize and, and what's the criteria that you use to determine where you're going to recruit talent, be it PG, travel tourneys, college summer leagues for Portland and Chuco? And do you recruit kids out of Arizona, the Southwest, West Coast? We have uh, particularly junior college kids. Uh, I think when guys get to that level and they can prove themselves and establish a track record at that level, that's really valuable information for us, obviously. And it establishes kind of some credibility about how they would be able to transition to division one baseball. And that's, that makes the, you can kind of, I don't think the word is shortcut, but that, that, that it's, it's easier to get the information you need from a, a JC guy that's out of your area than a high school guy. I think um, that can be a challenge. Uh, recruiting high school guys from way out of the area, but JC for certain, you know, we do it every year. We'll, we'll take a, the, the right player. However we can get them, you know, we're not um, overly particular about that, but as far as we, how we determine how we spend our, our time in recruiting uh, it's kind of all the above Kelly. Like, like we'll, we, we take information from all those different places. I will say in 2022, I think you, if you have the right plan and you have the right guys working it, you can get a lot done in the office not in terms of making like a final evaluation on a player, but saying, hey, this guy's worth going to see. Because at the end of the day, you have to eyeball the guy in person and get a real feel for how he plays the game. Um, and I, I think that's impossible to do through a screen. But I, I do think 
you can make sure you're going to the right places and seeing guys that could be a fit for you if you do some really good leg work beforehand. And that's not just seeing the video and, and seeing the ability, but it's also hey, make sure this guy's going to be viable academically, making sure he's a motivated student, making sure the character is right, you know, making sure it's, some, it's going to be somebody who values what we value, uh, making sure that that guy has a, a track record wherever he's playing. And he's been a guy who's been deciding baseball games, you know, not just a guy who has some physical ability, but can really put it uh, onto the field and, and help his team. And I think you can, if you work it hard in the office, you can get, you, you can cover some ground there. And then when you're, when you're out recruiting and you're spending that, that valuable time, you're spending it in the right places. So, you know, coach, you, know, um, you were talking about the stuff that you, that you do in your office. Uh, I know, you know who the top prospects are, but really the key is being able to talk to them and get them to want to become retrievers for four years. I mean, how do you do that? You've got to be a little bit of a magician to really talking to these top ranked players and get them to come there. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'm a magician, uh, Rick. <laughs> I, I, I would say I'm, I'm certainly less than a magician. What I've kind of hit on over the years, guys, is I think, again, if we do that good work in the office and we develop, you know, a lot of leads and, and, and we have a good working knowledge of a lot of guys who are good players, you know, have physical ability and, and could be com good options for us, that gives us an opportunity to, instead of trying to uh, – you know, really figure out what's going to work for each individual prospect. A lot of it's just telling our story, right? And just saying like, hey, this is what we're about. This is yeah. what we value. This is the value of the university. We think you're a really good player. We think you'd have a great future here. If you feel like if this is landing with you, if this is something that is um, exciting to you and where you can see yourself, then come aboard. We're going to win a lot of ball games together. And if it's not, then we're going to find somebody who, um, you know, values the opportunity here at a really high level. And that's what, that's what, what the legwork I think really gets you is you always have another option uh, to, to where you're never, you're never counting on landing that one recruit. It's always just, I always tell our assistants, Hey, just make sure we're, we're getting our message out there and we'll attract the right guys, you know, be the right kind of honey for the right kind of bees. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that's really cropped up over the last couple of years is the showcases. And some coaches like them and some coaches really don't, you know, what's, uh, what's your take on that whole process? Um, I, I'm probably maybe like a little bit more old school. Um, I would say I'm, I'm more on that end of the spectrum. I don't personally, even when I was a recruiting coordinator, I didn't go to a lot of like pro style workouts. I didn't see a, a tremendous amount of value there. I mean, I think those can be good eliminators. Uh, in terms of physical ability, but I also yeah. think in, in in like the modern age, you can get that information in the office as well. I want to go see a guy play games and I want to uh, hopefully, and I, and I wish there were more of these, uh, particularly over the summers, I want to go see him play games that matter, you know, where the stakes yeah. are high, where he, he, there's some there's some pressure on him to perform and, and to deliver for his teammates. So if we can ever find somebody that we're interested in pitching or, or playing the field or, yeah. or hitting in that kind of situation, like that's that's gold to us you know yeah that's, that's the what key yeah, the, the pitching building your team up the middle having a good catcher that sort of things uh what positions are you looking for uh for the retrievers so uh, down the stretch here uh in the 2023 class um uh, you know we're we're uh looking for um one more outfielder and and hopefully going to get um a commitment from one more arm soon we're, we got our fingers crossed there and then in uh, 2024, we're, we were fairly young this past year. So yeah. these classes have been smaller and, and we keep a small roster. Um, I know that's been, um, that's really changed during COVID. Some of, some of these rosters have really expanded and we got a little bit bigger with our, our seniors who, who we were able to keep around and kind of give them their year back. But uh, we're going to take the field with 30 guys this year, uh, just because I think um, if, if you're going to pride yourself in development, uh, you got to keep that ratio tight. Yeah. You know, you, you can't develop players. I think, you know, I think, I think you can develop, you know, 16 hitters or 14 pitchers individually, but when that number starts creeping up, then I think you get in trouble, but long way of me getting around to, uh, we'll just add probably a position player in each group in the 24 class and um, at least one more arm. I mean, you kind of can never have enough uh, as we all you know. You can never so, have enough pitching. Uh, you are so right. <laughs> yeah. We, we, you, you, you always had, However many pitchers you have, you always have one fewer than that would make you really comfortable, right? So, exactly. um, yeah, it, uh, I, I think 
you're you're always on the lookout for guys who can who can give you some reliability there, and we're no different. Liam, you got to go back to the old days where the Orioles developed four 20 game winners. Now that'll make a manager or coach uh, at a college level feel pretty good. If you got guys like that, <laughs> if, if, if we can do that, if, if, if we get, you know, Jim Palmer walking through the door, then it'll be a good spring. Um, you, go. you know, okay. I, I know that, I know that for a fact. Um, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, those guys are special, right? That's, that, that, that's why we still talk about them. We have the guys who are consistent starting pitchers in our program. Um, yeah. who, you know, we still remember their names and we still talk about those guys. And it's because of those guys who can be consistent, you know, game in, game out. Every time you give them the ball, like there's not there's not all that many of them. So we, we still yeah. remember them. and we still remember those guys here in Baltimore, obviously, you know. <laughs> well, let's discuss the uh, paradigm shift that is uh, taking place in college sports. Now, the transfer portal and NIL you know, travel, it's been my take that travel ball players are completely conditioned to jump from team to team. We've seen it here on the West Coast. So realistically, the odds that you lose good players to, let's say, a power five team are pretty high, maybe higher than ever. Are you more inclined to scan JUCOs for more experienced players who can step right in? And would that be primarily because they run less of a portal risk and you know that you have them for two years to fill holes? That's a that's a good question, Kelly. Um, I think I think it de- and I don't want to sound like a cop out, but I, I think it depends on the guy and it depends on the need. Um, I think if you can find those high school guys that you really, really believe in, not just as a player, but also academically, because we work also with um, uh, the APR, the academic progress rate, which is a, a, a big metric in all college sports now and really important. Um, and you, you got to be able to trust those guys for four years. And that's a long time. I mean, 18 to 22 is a time where we all develop a lot and change and grow. And you got to kind of feel like you really want to go through that period with a particular guy. So I would say because of some of the things you mentioned and, and some of what I'm talking about, the standard for, hey, this is a high school guy we're really comfortable with, probably higher than ever. You know, probably to yeah. get to yes on our end with a high school guy is probably a higher bar than ever to clear. Um, and I think when you don't find that guy, you know, let's say you have a need, you need a, um, you know, second baseman uh, and you just can't quite get comfortable with any of these high school guys, because maybe a few years ago they would, they would have gotten over that threshold, but now the standards are a little bit higher. That's where maybe a junior college guy could come in. Yeah. Um, and, and I think some of those guys honestly are getting squeezed by the, the four-year transfer. So there's some really good players available at the junior college level that can really go. And, you know, we'll, we're always in the market for the right guys. Well, you know, the NIL is definitely coming to D1 baseball. It's not there in spades right now, but it's, it's, it's definitely already here. Uh, but not for everybody, obviously programs paying. Well, let's talk about programs that can afford to pay for players actually, because mm-hmm. that's right around the corner. They're likely, it's my take that they'll they're likely bleed out less players into the portal because they're paying them to stay there. So smaller clubs won't have as much access to reload with power five cast offs or cast outs. Mm-hmm. How will that affect programs like UMBC moving forward? And what is your take on the NIL and being able to access funds? potentially to keep or attract players because it's going to be competitive that way. Sure. So first the, the NIL, I don't have a, any great issue with it. Um, you know, I think if guys are able to uh, make some money, in a in a way that, um, you know, is uh, legal with the NCAA in college. I mean, I remember being a, a poor college student. I, I don't necessarily feel like everybody has to go through that. You know, if they're yeah. able to do it, I think that's fine. I think the way it happens at a place like UMBC at a mid-major is it would happen individually with specific student athletes in our department, right? So it would be something where they were bringing the value to whatever NIL deal that they were a part of, and they would be able to kind of work it out on their own. And, you know, we wouldn't, as a institution be as involved in that. I know when you get into the power fives, now you start to talk about collectives and the university being the one who distributes the money or the department, I should say. And uh, that's just a different world and a different beast that, that, than we work with day to day. And I'm comfortable with the way we do it. Um, I think that the way it's done in the power of five sounds like uh, it's it's obviously a, a, a big paradigm shift for the, the, the sport and for college athletics in general. And that's kind of its own thing. Um, I, I, 
if candidly, I'm, I'm a little glad I don't have to deal with it in that, in that realm. Um, and then as far as uh, not having as much movement from power five to places like us, we've had our share of power five transfers over the years. For us, it's, it's more, it's gotta be a really specific fit. I mean, we're the honors university in our state. It's uh, we have a specific way and set of values. We go about things with our program. Like it's gotta be, you know, a, a round peg for a round hole. So um, we we've had some, but it's not like um, it's not like a lifeblood for us. It's not like we're we're just waiting on the next power five guy to come through. We've it's it's worked out sometimes, and but it's just been because the kid really fit us, not necessarily because he was like a power five guy, if that makes some sense. So sure. um, again, like we'll take a good player and a guy who fits us, you know, however we can get him. But um, I'm not as concerned about. Uh, you know, one particular avenue getting yeah. a little bit more shut off than another. <laughs> but, you know, coach, um, let's talk a little bit about your specific ball club. You know, do you have a lot of good players that are coming back next season? I know you want to get more wins. That's the bottom line. And it would sure be great to find a couple of pitchers, but, you know, Right now, maybe all the really, really good uh, top pitchers might be gone. Who knows at this point? So how are you going to juice it up a little bit for next year? Sure. Well, well we feel pretty good about it. Um, we feel like we, we've kind of gotten things finally into a good spot and, and, and gotten aware, again, getting through the pandemic and going through being young. And, the, you know, I think anytime, even though I was here before, anytime you have a transition to a new head coach, there's a there's a curve that comes along with that. But we feel like we're at the end of that. And one of the reasons we're really excited about this year is we were freshman, freshman, sophomore in the weekend rotation, and all three guys really performed well. Um, we needed to to figure out the the bullpen a little bit. We we never quite we were a little banged up there, and we never quite found the the right combination, and ended up losing fourteen one run games, um, which is which is honestly wow. hard to do, guys. Really. Um, <laughs> but we bring we bring back, you know, seven out of nine guys in the lineup. We bring back the weekend rotation. We've got eight arms coming in that have come from instituting these recruiting processes that I've been talking about that we're really excited about. And it, it's been a really easy year or it's been a really easy summer. And I anticipated being a really easy year to motivate our guys. I mean, our, I think as a head coach, you can give them whatever speech you want to give them, but they have to look around and say like, Hey, I really believe in these guys in the locker room. And what we're able to see out of our young players and knowing that they're a year older and like any other year, some of the better guys in the conference who are older players for other teams, have, you know, are moving on. We're excited about it and we got to go out there and do it, of course, but we've been working towards this for a while and we feel like, you know, we've got some momentum and we're ready to go out there and play. I mean, I, I wish we could tee it up tomorrow. I really do. Well, it's right around the corner, right? Fall is just about here, and I mean, you'll they're coming to school pretty soon, aren't they? When, when does your school start? So we're end of the month here in August. We always okay. come back the last week of August, and then the first uh, practice with the team is the day after Labor Day. Cool. Well, Coach Liam Bowen of UMBC, the head skipper, the big dog of the Retrievers. Thanks for joining us. Good luck. Let's stay in touch. That's all we have for today. Rick, any parting words? Well, just that, you know, again, you know, the more coaches we seem to interview, the more you guys all remind me of the same people. You got so much passion for the game. I love to see it because you don't even see that at the major league level. When I do interviews and I was doing interviews for 15 years with most of the coaches at the major league level. They didn't have that fire that a lot of you college coaches have. And that's a great thing, you know. I believe that more of the college coaches are more like what it was for me when I was coming up to the big leagues, because you guys will teach the one run game and how important it is to move guys over, get them over, get them in, be able to do the fundamental things like bunting, hitting the opposite way. They're totally forgetting these things at the major league level. So I've been encouraged by all of the coaches and yourself too that talk the game more like I felt it when I was coming up the ranks. So congratulations on that and good luck with the upcoming season. I'd love to see you win it all. Rick, I really appreciate that. I'll, yeah. I'll really, I'll really treasure that as a, as a, <laughs> a Oriole fan, you know, my whole life and a Baltimore guy. Um, I think it's a great sport. Obviously we all love baseball, but the, the, the sport here at the college level has never been stronger. So I appreciate you noticing that and, right. and saying those kind words. 
if you don't have the passion for it, you shouldn't be there. And you obviously Amen. have. Well, so, well, speak of passion, this is the Little League World Series month. So keep your <laughs> eyes tuned to your televisions because there's going to be some real passionate, exciting ball out there. And it's actually one of my favorite times of the year. From all of us at the Prospect Blueprint, keep your chin in and your eyes on the ball. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, follow us, watch us on YouTube. And now we're on eight different platforms. So we're on every podcast network you can imagine. We'll see you soon.